Raphael Brandeo and Tony Burton. What an interesting comparison of two young up-and-comers in the IFBB. So why would I just randomly set this one up? I'm sure most of you know by now both of these guys will be competing at the Arnold Classic South America. It is going to be a great show. And for those of you who are thinking, well, Tonio's going to win this one easy. He's the New York Pro Champion. I don't know. I don't think so. And for those of you thinking, well, Rafael's going to clean house in this one. That is, you know, after his impressive third place performance at the Ohio. Well, I say the same thing. I don't know. I don't think so. Tony Burton is on fire, guys. He got eighth at the Olympia to, I guess, Rafael's tenth a year prior to that. But at the Arnold Classic, I dare I say, Brandeo has improved. So this is actually going to be an outstanding matchup. And dare I say, these guys will be one and two. Hard to say, hard to say. Let us go through some of these shots and I will I'll give you my honest opinion based on pitchers alone. Of course, lighting's different, angles different, things of that nature, but we do our best. And at the end of the day, that's all any one of us can do. Raphael, he has that flow, them aesthetics that usually put everybody to shame. Guys like, I mean, even even the top two guys that beat him, even Samson, beside Brandeo, his midsection looked a little bit, you know, no thing without being rude. And Hattie Chupin, he didn't have the proportions, the arms, though, like I said, the flow. Of course, they were still both beating him. But that is besides the point. Tony O'Burton, you're not going to play that with him. He is a statue. Look at that midsection. Look at this guy. He got eighth place at the Olympia for a reason. And I can hear you guys now. But Max Max Muscle, why did you miss-size it so much? Tony O's a 212 guy, Raphael, six feet. Listen, Buckingham Palace, he's baby, please. Tony O is one of those guys that's not that short. And Raphael is one of those guys that's not really that tall. So put them together, and this is the sizing that you get. This is the sizing that you get. Might give an edge to to Rafael in the front double, but I don't know. The more I look at it, Tonio, he's what I like to, what I like to call Chris. And we don't have very good lighting. The background at the Olympia was just terrible. Now, just just for to be special for the front lat spread, I doctored up Tonio's pitcher a little bit. I I shed some more light on it because the lighting was terrible, and I gave him the Arnold's Classics. Come on, do it. The Arnold Classic background. So, what do you guys think? That that makes a huge difference, and I'm sure Tonio would agree, or in particular, guys like Samson, who were in fact at the Olympia and at the Arnold Classic, they would testify that the lighting makes a huge difference. I mean, if you're not seeing these guys under the right light, what's the point of them going through the through the dieting and the training that would kill us more uh, mere mortal men? More mortal, more, mere mortal men. These guys, they go through that. I mean... Jeez Louise, most of you guys couldn't go through a day without a, a loaf of bread. One loaf of bread, please. Om, 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 om. You think these guys are eating loaves of bread? They're not. They're absolutely not. But back to the, the actual comparison, having that background really gives us a glimpse of the fact that Tonio does have that shape. He does have those proportions of a Raphael, Raphael. But I guess at the end of the day, Rafael might be slightly bigger, so that could be a, an advantage, could be an advantage to uh, Brandeo. Go to the next shot, side chest here, and it seems to be, seemingly, judging by pitchers, I have to reiterate that, seems to be a close one as far as conditioning, proportions, even aesthetics, things of that nature, between these guys, with Rafael being slightly larger. But take a close look at those tie-ins, hamstrings, quads, of uh, then the muscle separation of Tonio, he could be that much more conditioned. So it would be a, a matter of 
Antonio has to be that much more conditioned because he's not going to beat him structurally. I mean, structures are what we have. And Rafael has one of the best ones in the IFBB. So, yeah, I, th I find it similar. Front double, front lad, and side chest. Very similar between these two guys. And the side tricep, this is going to be no different. And there is an argument that Tonio could be much more peeled. Peeled. You guys don't know why I say peeled? It's an homage to Sean Roden. It's a Sean Roden impression. May he rest in peace. But yes, look at the ab separation. Rafael, he's great. But Tonio looks like he's a little bit deeper. And keep in mind that bad lighting and the bad background... They were selecting backgrounds that were blending in with these guys. Couldn't even see them. Terrible. Terrible. But, yeah, I guess there's no sense of, sense of uh, whipping that dead horse. An edge, I have to be honest. I love Tonio. He's the man. But half AL, he's definitely getting an edge coming out of the two first, two front, two side. But this is bodybuilding, and we like to have a look at the backs as well. And I don't want to upset you Brazilians. You guys are a good group. A good group. Much like us Canadians. Friendly bunch. Friendly bunch. But the fact of the matter is... And hey, I was given half hell as props from the front. But from the back, Tonio... This is where he was getting his 8th place at the Olympia. This is an 8th place Olympia back. Look at this. Look at this. He was dropping guys like flies. With that condition. Look, I can't believe the size difference of the lats. And Tonio with a smaller frame. And again, you size police. Look at Tonio holding his legs straighter. Half AL, he bends more at the knees. So those three or four inches, if that what it would be, it's down to, you know, a couple of inches. That's all it would be. I guess we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if I was right or wrong on the sizing of these guys. But even, even using pitchers... We can see Tonio is going to have an advantage in the back shot. So these are the ones that Rafael is going to have to watch out for. And these are the poses that Tonio is going to want to milk these ones. Absolutely. Now the rear double. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Now I believe I made Rafael even too big here. Because he also leans back. Makes him even shorter. But like I said, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see. This one here is a little bit closer. I have to say. And obviously, guys, watched some video footage. Seen uh, this is Rep One, Rep One uh, video footage on Instagram. Great page or great Instagram uh, page. Yeah, I guess you'd call it that. Very close up footage. And if you see some close up footage of Tony O'Burton, there's some good stuff from the New York Pro, Gilco Productions, things of that nature. I don't think it's going to be a question for condition. I don't think it's going to be a question. So, Tony O'Burton, yeah, there's an argument he was losing in the first two, first four even, really. But the conditioning from behind, if you can see it from on the pitchers, imagine in real life. So, Tony O may very well win all the shots with condition. Not saying for sure, but the back shots, mm, the, the rear double is good for, for Brandeo. But speaking about conditioning only... Tonio's going to have it. Now go to the abs and thigh. And when you when you turn back to the front, could be advantage Brandale. He seems to have more separation in the quads. Midsections are close between these guys. Structurally speaking, Brandale is always going to have an advantage. Lats, things of that nature. It's going to be close, like I said. More than likely an edge to Rafael Brandale. With a little epithet saying, the lighting sucked. And the background sucked at that Olympia. Gotta fix that, guys. Go to the most muscular. And most certainly, you can see a size advantage of Brandale. The guy's nearly six feet tall, I would say. Maybe maybe even as low as five foot ten. Maybe as low as five foot ten. Hard to say. But the point here is he has some huge big delts. Massively wide clavicle. Guys ripped to shreds from the quads. Just incredible. Incredible. Tony O'Burton, smaller frame, but the guy has the thicker, denser type muscle. Look at those delts. 
They look like cannonballs. They look like cannonballs. So you could argue Brandeo may be winning more shots. But let me tell you something. This is bodybuilding. And guys like Hattie Shupin defeat guys like Samson Douda because of that razor sharp thin skin condition. Antonio Burton could offer a lot of trouble for Rafael Brandeo. Given the fact that it's down in South America, could that make a difference? Could that make a difference? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Chris Bumstead wins in America against Americas. Americans. America. <laughs> yes. This is going to be an awesome matchup, guys. It's going to be a one and two situation. We'll have to wait and see. I will be doing some prediction videos for the Arnold Cla or the yeah yeah the Arnold Arnold's Classics Brazil. Oh no, it's the Arnold's Classics South America. It's going to be a dandy. And Brandeo doesn't have to walk around in a big full piece suit because you know he gets freezing cold because he's from down there and it's always so hot. So that's why he wore that big suit and hat keep himself warm. Hit thumbs up on the video, guys. Let me know who do you have winning. Who do you have winning this picture comparison? Who do you have winning in the, the upcoming event? Because think about it, guys. Tony O'Burton, he has trained with that, that knowledge of him getting eighth place at the Olympia for the past few months. And this guy is going to be much better, much better than he was back at the Olympia. Hit thumbs up. Let me know, and you will find out who I think is going to win during my prediction list. And that will be my ultimate response to the uh, Arnold Brazil. Have a great one, guys. Or Arnold South America. I did it again. Have a great one. Well, what are you doing? How about subscribing to my channel, please? And if you're bored, if you're in the mood, you can check out my latest video. It is a good one. And there's a whole bunch of videos in this playlist all stacked together. So, you know, you can watch every pose. Another one over here, too. One, two, three, diddly-dee.